Amen. Bishop Edward E. Schaus. Let's receive him as he comes. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Come on. Come on. Give the Lord great praise. Hallelujah. Pentecost. Come on. Give God great praise. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. Lord, it's good to be in the house. Good to be among the saints of God. I know you've had a great time. Man. And it ain't going to take me very long to say what I got to say. Last time I saw most of you, I had a broken foot. You prophesied, and it was true. <laughs> and for four months, I fought and cried and moaned and groaned. And we, at this age, we don't move like we used to move anyhow. <laughs> Dr. Clay, good to see you, man. <laughs> That's, you. That's my friend over there. And this preacher here, man, I know these preachers are tore up. Ain't put the top on something. Ain't nothing, ain't, ain't nothing to put the top on. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the precious saints. As I live and get older, I appreciate the older saints. Because I are one. <laughs> I'm glad for those who traveled from Columbus with me today. Our mother Mackie, I think she's got the age on all of us. I think it's 97. <laughs> mother Mary and Mackie, one of my church mothers. Just wave your hand, mother. Just wave your hand. 97, and she knows how to pray and knows when to pray. She'll call and send me a message. Bishop, this is what you've got to do. And bless your heart, I do it. <laughs> Our church mother, amen. Come on, Mother Laurie. This is my church mother. <laughs> I tease her because she is from Cleveland. Hey, there he is. <laughs> I tell you, those Cleveland people, boy, they, 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 they got it going on. I, I tell you what, I don't mess with Cleveland folk. <laughs> when they say I'm from Cleveland, okay, good, but I'm glad to see you. Oh, we have such a great time. Elder Denise is with us. <laughs> Elder Anissa is with us. And Lady Rosemary Lysis Schaus. <laughs> we will celebrate 59, I believe, this year. God has been good. And y'all think that's great, but Elder and Sister Clay was married before I was. <laughs> Amen. Marriage is something that you don't see holding together. I was in your wedding. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you, it's nothing like being around the saints. Let me just reminisce. Let me just reminisce. Amen. I love the people of Portsmouth. And truth is told, I gave my heart here. And if I lay my head down and talk to the Lord, I'll tell him I did it all in Portsmouth. I left some in Columbus. There's some in Columbus too, but I thank God for the days here at this altar. Precious Mother Row. Deacon Leroy Yarbrough over there. 
those deacons who would say, saints, it's time to start service. I appreciate the praise team, but we didn't have praise teams back in there. Time to start service. They strike out with a song. We join in. We'd sing until heaven just opened up. And the glory of God just fell among us. I think the theme is about the glory of God. Amen. Deacon Ship, you looking awful sharp over there. I'm going to trust one eye on you. <laughs> If you can't enjoy the church, if you can't enjoy your salvation, then you're in trouble. Nobody made us come tonight. I heard pastor say I had to struggle. I had to wake myself up, and we had to rush down to church. We didn't, nobody forced us. We came because we wanted to be here. I enjoy my salvation. You ought to enjoy yours too. Amen. God bless you. Now, I don't have the stamina that I used to have in preaching. I use most of it for the bus and I'm about to hang that up. So, if you pray, I'll get through quick. If you sit on me, then we got a problem. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the Lord has given me. God has been good. God has been good. I, I know for a fact that you've had the pure word of God preached to you this weekend. I'm sorry I couldn't be here, but there's no need for me to try to rehearse what you've already heard. But I want to encourage you to keep on seeking the glory of God. Now we're in the time, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to agree with me, that we're in the time that people are looking for glory all in the wrong places, on the wrong things, whether it be the human or the inanimate. You know, that, that doesn't have soul or feeling without life or spirit. They're looking for glory. Mm -hmm. A few months ago, and you agree with me, the sports world was turned upside down by one person who changed the whole course of basketball. A new record was set. Only to know that there's someone in the wings right now working to beat that record by the name of LeBron James. And immediately, media and sports advocate jumped on the bandwagon and said, King LeBron. I looked at it and I said, he's done some wonderful things. Took that basketball and done some wonderful things. But he ain't the king. Y'all right. ought to help me. Y'all ought to help me. Don't get mad at me. I, I love sports. Don't get mad at me. Right now, as I said, there's somebody that's going to break that record. You and I may not be here to see it, but I'm guaranteeing you there's somebody in the wings working and waiting and wanting that chance. And the way they're coming out of college now, out of high school now, I don't think it's going to be that long where they'll say, well, we thought LeBron was the king, but here's another king. Y'all ain't said nothing. These are people who are seeking glory. In my travels, I had a charter where I picked up a group of religious folk, and I won't name the religion, but I picked up, I was there to pick up this religious group to take them to their conference. And while I was waiting for them together, the attendant there said, uh, would you like to come into the temple and Watch me put my God to bed. 
Yeah. Who wants to see this? Who wants to see this? So I took my shoes off, took my cap off, and I followed him into the temple. He was very serious. Told me a few things about his religion, and I'm waiting to see this God. And he goes into the inter sanctum. I didn't go in there, I kind of peeped around like that, you know. <laughs> and lo and behold, he had a picture of somebody that was his God. He covered it up, put it to bed, and turned out the lights. Okie dokie. I headed for the door. <laughs> I was glad to get on the bus, load them up, and get out of there. People have different ideas about God and about glory. I didn't understand, and I didn't bother to talk to them about it. Needless to say, I was glad to leave. So, so, so many people are mixed up today. You don't mind me talking, do you? So many, of, so many of you are mixed up today looking for glory. There are glory seekers still out here today who want to be seen and heard and who want to put on a show. It's not new. Look where the church has come to now from what it used to be. This statement is often made Church is not, get, is not like it used to be. You are absolutely right. It is not. And if things don't change, it will never be like it used to be. Somebody say amen. amen. We used to come together without the promise of anything but the visitation of the Holy Ghost. Ushered in by saints who used their hands and their voice and laid on the altar, took the horns of the altar and held on to them, held on to us. We had church. But now, somebody say, but now, now. we got to dig deep as leaders and pastors. We got to dig deep now to get a word for the people. The settings in the church now are so different. There are some backgrounds that I see, and you know I travel everywhere, and I peep in everywhere, especially if it's a religious conference, I peep in and see what's going on because I want to know. And sometimes I don't know whether it's a pulpit, Doc, or whether it's a nightclub. <laughs> when it comes to the singing now, I get my foot tapping, then I have to stop and wonder, wait a minute. <laughs> Who are they talking about? Who are they singing about? Some of the gospel, you never hear who they are talking about. You never hear who they are worshiping. It's called the crossover, y'all understand. I, I'm old, but I understand. It's the crossover, it's about the Benjamins, you know, I understand. I, 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 I'm, not locking what, I'm not knocking what the leaders have to do today to hold on to the, to the people of their congregation. COVID came and destroyed the church just about the human part of it. People died. People left. People said, I'm not coming back. Especially when we went on Facebook and stream live into people's homes. They can lay in the bed. They don't have to get up and wash up. They don't have to curl their hair. They don't have to put on any clothes. Come on with me. They can lay right there, and if they don't like what you're saying, click. Go somewhere else. Made it easy for them. Church, church, church. Then the preachers have to find something to pull out of the hat. They had to come up with unique programs, and I don't knock that. But where is God getting the glory? Glory seekers. Glory seekers are nothing new. 
On one occasion in the Bible, if you remember, you Bible students, there's a, a warning about the glory seekers. Look at the words of the writer in Luke 18, 10, 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and one a publican. And the Pharisee stood and began to brag and prayed thus with himself. I thank God I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, undulterers, even as this publican. Mm -hmm. His time, he took time to do some bragging. He said, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. May I stop and inject this thought to you. Nobody has any bragging rights. I want to tell you right now, straight up, not a one of us in here have any bragging rights how good we are and what we've done, where we've come from and where we're going and what we have. There is no bragging rights. My late father used to say there's some good in the worst of us, some bad in the best of us. And the world put out that song, Bad to the Bone. Oh, y'all don't listen to anything like that. <laughs> Thank you, daughter. Thank you, daughter. I hear you over there. Certainly, this guy had a form of godliness. Now, I'm sure there are some things in his life, just as it is with us gathered here today. We keep a close watch on our closet. Come on now. We have two or three master locks on that closet and dare you to come with any cutters to cut them locks off. Y'all get that in a few minutes. Combination locks even's on there. We have some things, why do we have? We have some things that we are not proud of. And for real, we don't want any of them skeletons to come out and start, y'all ain't gonna help me. You don't want none of them skeletons to come out of that closet. Yeah, I know y'all saved and sanctified. I know I, I don't want to put a damper on what you've heard. But in that same scripture, that publican stood afar off, would not even lift up his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. If you don't ask God to forgive you every day, if you don't repent every day, I got news for you. You're going to have a challenge going to heaven because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No bragging rights. Of course, you might hit it on the head and give a good word, and you might hit it on the head and preach real good. You might hit it on the head and give a good testimony. You might jump and do a good shout, but you still don't have any bragging rights. Because if it wasn't for God and his mercy, you wouldn't even get a chance to get any of his glory. I'm still on the glory train. I'm still on that. You got to understand that glory will come in due time. When we hear the Lord say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the Lord. That will be glory for me. I don't know about you. I'm just about through. I'm just, just talking to what I wrote while I was on the road here. Some want that pity glory. They want people to know that they're fasting and, and, and so forth. But the scripture gives us instructions on that. Matthew 6, 16 and 18 says, when you fast, don't make yourself look like the hypocrites. They put a look of suffering on their faces. So that people will see that they are fast. And listen, you can get ugly as an ape if you want to. But you ain't right in your heart. All of the fasting, all of that mean look. That's why I can't understand why folk come to church looking all mean like you ready to whip somebody. You can't whip nobody. 
They come in church looking mean. They act mean. They think that that makes them saved. That don't make you saved. You can have your dress all the way down on the floor. You men can have your beard all the way down to your waist. Bam, but let me tell you, if that heart, somebody say hard. If that heart ain't right, if your intentions are not right, you're not going to see no glory of the Lord. I'm still on the glory train. But the Lord went on to say, in essence, when you fast, wash your face and make yourself look nice. Oh, then no one will know you're fasting except your Father, who is in heaven. And he will reward you because you've done it in secret to the people. He will reward you openly. You talk about the church ain't like it used to be. Let the saints get back to the fasting and praying and not doing it to, to get draw attention. Let the church get back to the praying. Let the church get back to the fasting. Let the church lay on the altar. Let the church have the shut-ins and not bring any pillars and blankets. Y'all ain't going to say anything. You want to see the church return to what we're used to having if you want to see it happening. And let me tell you, God will not be better to one generation when he'll do it to another. Come on here. The generations before us, they were blessed and, and God God bless them. You mean to tell me as another generation, we're not going to see any of the, 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 the miracles that happened then? We are open to that because there were promises that were given to the generations that are no longer with us that was not fulfilled. And I'm just crazy enough to believe they have to be fulfilled. God's word cannot go out to him and return to him void, but it will accomplish that which, it, oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Oh, you ain't going to help me. Amen. It will accomplish that which it was sent out to do. Oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Those precious saints, they sang, they prayed, they fussed at us, they held on to us. Come on here. They talked us uh, into be believing what they believed. Uh, let me tell you, we can still uh, enjoy the riches of God. Uh, come on, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Let me say this, and you might not understand his grandfather, who we never seen, stood at the altar, stood at the pulpit in this building when it wasn't this big, and declared some things. They did not happen in his time, but now, somebody say, but now, but now, I'm a generation that's here. Amen. We're moving on. There's another generation. There's another generation behind us uh, that's coming. Come on here. If I don't get to see it, uh, amen, you ought to be with your arms stretched out, your head lifted. Uh, uh, come on here. Believe in God. The same God that delivered folk then. He's still in the deliverance business. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, the same God. Uh, oh, come on here. Yeah, that was healing then. Uh, he's still healing now. Uh, we're praying our son is in the hospital now. Uh, amen. Worried about his kidneys. But we're telling him uh, the doctor has his say. Uh, but our God. Uh, our God uh, has the last say. Uh, I don't care what they say. My God has the last say. Oh, somebody ought to shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Hallelujah. Oh, so we're not going to be glory seekers. For I heard the late Bishop Willie Cardinal was standing here and say, Whatsoever you do in word, I indeed do it all. Y'all ain't going to help me. <laughs> Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> listen, listen, let me, get to, let me get to the message. Let me get to the message. Show me your glory. All right, I've said enough. Uh, but first of all, what is glory? It's a high renown, honor won by notable achievements. Did not God do it? They're wearing shirts and stuff, and they're saying, won't he do it? 
Do you really believe it when you say, won't he do it? Do you know what you're saying when you say, won't he do it? Come on here. Magnificence or great beauty, we sing our God. He's a mighty God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and glory. Oh, God. He's a mighty God. Anybody know that? Uh, taking great pride or pleasure in. So, in the Greek and the Hebrew words, Hadar means large splendor or majestic or honor. And a dearth means large and splendor. How God contains all of those things. Oh, come on here. So, uh, we've taken the theme from the time that Moses and God uh, had a thing going on. Y'all ain't going to help me here. There were things that Moses was looking for when he had the encounter on Mount Sinai. Uh, that was a time, if you read before you, where you got your theme was, that God had spoken to Moses and said, tell your people, uh, when you see that mountain, don't come and touch that mountain. If you touch it, you're going to die. Come on here. If your animal touches it, it's going to die. So he told Moses, you'd make sure that you tell your people you can't touch this mountain. And notice who he's talking to. He's talking to Moses. He ain't talking to the congregation. He's talking to the leaders. A lot of folks say, I don't see it like that. I don't hear it like that. That's because God ain't talking to you. He's talking to your leader. Amen. Amen. Well, in all of those chapters, uh, it's uh, evident that uh, Moses had established a relationship with God. If you want to see the glory of God, uh, establish a relationship with him. If you want to see glory, establish a relationship with God. Now the lesson teaches that Moses had had many encounters where he and God would talk. Man, what kind of relationship is that? That you could actually talk to God, the one who created everything. You could talk to God, the one who spoke and it was. You could talk to God, hallelujah, who could speak the word whether you live or die. Here is a man having a relationship with God. Listen here. God and Moses had such a relationship and Moses saved the children of Israel so many times. Once he asked the Lord, Lord the Lord got mad at the people he created. And listen, just like us, you know, just like us, just like us, just like us, amen, God gets tired of our foolishness. Come on here. God delivered the children of Israel time after time. He delivers us time after time. We turn right around and do that same thing over and over and then ask God. We have the audacity to ask our Lord, deliver me. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Amen. On many occasions and this one occasion Moses talks to God and he says, why why does your wrath wax so hot against thy people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt? You brought them out with great power and a mighty hand. What's up, man? What's, why are you so mad at them? He talks so good until God reconsidered and changed his mind. Now, I know deep folk going to say, you can't change God's mind, but I'll prove it to you right here. Amen. Moses Moses talked to God and he reminded God, God, you remember what you told Abraham? Uh, am I preacher? Preacher, am I help me out, man? Yeah, you remember what you told Isaac? You remember what you told the children of Israel? And the things you promised them? Amen. And Exodus 32, 14. 
16, if you will, the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Read it. I ain't lying. I ain't making it up. He changed God's mind. And let me tell you, we have to be careful with our leaders because they stand between you and God. And I know sometimes preachers, we want to step aside and say, Lord, have at it. Hallelujah. But we have mercy and compassion and God listens to us. Come on here. Amen. Now the relationship. If you have a pastor, if you have a leader, if you know of a leader that has great relationship, if you know of somebody that has great relationship with God, you ought to honor them to the max. Relationship. Look at the setting here in the main scripture of the theme. Moses puts the whole camp on alert. It says the people rose up and every man stood at his tent door if you read in there, Moses declared unto them, you can't even touch your wife. Yeah. Mm? You can't, uh-uh. No, sir. The whole camp is on alert. Your whole camp is on alert. Every man, the Bible says, every man stood by his tent door and they watched Moses as Moses went into the tabernacle. Come on here. And when Moses got in the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended down and stood at the door of the tabernacle. My God, could you stand it to go into this church building and a cloud comes down on it? You can't get out. Nobody can get in. And it's God. Relationship. It happened, it happened. The cloudy pillar descended, stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. I'm in the book. And the people saw it. And the Lord spake to Moses face to face as a man speaketh to his friend. And it was here that the conversation that Moses and the Lord talked about what was the future for the children of Israel. And finally the conclusion was the Lord would do whatever Moses had reminded him. The Lord said, I'll do that because you're my friend. You see, when you got a friend, when you got a friend, that friend going to help you. I ain't talking about the ones that going to talk about you. I ain't talking about them one might rescue you and then go tell everybody. I ain't talking about those friends might lend you a piece of change and then go tell somebody, you know, I, you owe me. I'm talking about a friend. A friend that will tell you when you're wrong. A friend that will tell you when you need to get it right. I'm talking about a friend that will pick you up and point you in the right direction. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hey Amen. We don't need so-called friends. We need friends. And Moses had the best friend in the world. Because Moses asked. God said, I'll do it. Because you're my friend. And I know you by your name. And you don't found grace in the Lord's sight. My God, look at this. It's a good thing to find grace in the Lord's sight. So at the end of the conversation, I imagine Moses thought, since we have this relationship, since you know me by my name, since you took me out on the backside of the desert and kept me there for 40 years, since you forgave me when I killed that Egyptian down in the Egypt land. Since you appointed me to be the ambassador to go back down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Since, since you had that much confidence in me, 
since you came down and closed the doors of the tabernacle and talked with me and you let everybody see that you saw me face to face and that we are great friends. I just, I just, I just want to ask you this one thing. Oh, please let me see your glory. But you see, you got to understand uh, the movement of God is so great. Uh, amen. The glory of God is so powerful. Uh, mere man cannot stand uh, the glory of God and live. Uh, come on, if the glory of God can come in the tabernacle uh, and the doorposts begin to move and they're inanimate. Uh, if the power of God uh, can go down into the gutters of life uh, and pick up a human being and make them a man or a woman, I'm here to tell you uh, that the glory of God is something that you need not uh, or want to play with. Uh, the glory of God, uh, it will pick you up. Yes, it will. You may not be able to see it, but the glory of God. Hey, the old saints used to be in service and they'd reach a peak and they'd holler glory. And when they hollered glory, demons had to flee. When they hollered glory, healing had to begin. When they hollered glory, sinners knew that there was a God somewhere. They came into the church and the glory of God would cause a drunk man to come and be delivered. The glory of God would come in and get a drug addict and change their vernacular. It would change their DNA. Amen. And they would become saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. The glory of God. You can't see it, uh, but it saturates everything that it touches. Uh, won't it do it, Elder Larry? Uh, the glory of God uh, came down town. Uh, hallelujah. And I pulled out the anointing oil uh, because I believe the glory of God uh, rested in it uh, and anointed that young man. Uh, and now he's one of the ambassadors uh, of the gospel. Uh, don't tell me what the glory of God uh, won't do so Moses said uh, since you've done all of this for me uh, just let me since we're friends and best pals uh, since we know each other since we see you eye to eye uh, just let me see your glory uh, but God said I know you ain't ready um, you're not ready for this uh, because you've been up on this mountain before uh, and talked to me uh, and when you went down on the mountain uh, you had Put a veil over your face uh, because the people couldn't stand. Uh, my glory was on you. You ever been around certain saints? Uh, I'm talking about saints now, not ain'ts. Uh, but I'm talking about saints uh, who get in the presence of God. Uh, and then when they come out of that prayer closet, uh, they don't have to say nothing to you. Uh, when they come through the door, you don't have to say anything to them, but the glory of the Holy Ghost, the glory of God seems to rest on them. Come on, here. But he said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you, friend. Since me and you good buddies, I'm going to let you see my hind part. Uh, you, you may not like it, but uh, I can't let you see all of my glory. And I ain't going to let you stand here and look at me full face. I'm going to take you to the cliff of the rock and say look here buddy get up in that cliff right there get up in that cliff right there get in there and make yourself comfortable and I'm gonna come by him and when I come by I'm gonna let you get a glimpse of my glory can you imagine Moses in that cliff of that rock said oh boy oh boy oh boy I get to see his glory and here comes God walking by him and said hey 
take a peek there, son. That's my glory. Come on here. Y'all ain't going to hear me here. Come on, come on. That's why we ask the Lord um, to hide us in the cliff um, of the rock. In the cliff of the rock, I know the Lord is going to come by. When I hide in the cliff of the rock, uh, the enemy can't get to me um, because I'm um, backed in. Uh, he can't get to my back. Uh, and the Lord's going to come by. Y'all ain't going to say nothing here. In the word of God, um, I got a hiding place um, in the word of God, um, in the cliff of the rock. Um, come on, give God great praise. Um, come on, give him great praise. Well, down here, I may not get a full vision of his glory, but I'm working on it that when he calls me, and I answer. I may have to lay down and sleep a little while till he comes back. But I have the anticipation that he's going to split the sky and say, come, my beloved. I'm going to wake up. Come on here. I'm going to see him in all of his glory. No more cliff of the rock. No more hiding. But I'm going to see him just like he is and I'm going to go up and join him y'all ain't going to say nothing those of us that remain shall be caught up and changed in the moment and the twinkling of the eye oh show me your glory show me your glory be careful what you ask for for you just might get it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we bless your name. We bless your magnificent, your wonderful name. Thank you for your visitation. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your lifting. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for taking us higher. Thank you for giving us a portion of your glory. Now, Lord, help us to be ready. Ah, Lord, we know that our redemption draws nigh. We pray, God, that you would help us be ready. Not pointing fingers at anybody else, but making ourselves ready. Hallelujah, because we want to see your glory. Thank you for the previews. Thank you for what you're showing us what it's going to be like. We thank you right now. Bless these, your people. Keep them safe, sanctified, and filled with thy spirit. If there's one that don't know you, Lord, in the pardon of sin, and would like to experience your glory, Lord, touch their heart. Right now, send them down to the altar. Let them be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let them be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Lord, show us your glory. And the people gave God a great praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. praise. Now you say you want to see his glory. If you praise him like that, he going to give you some of that glory. If you want to see that glory, you want to experience that glory, keep on praising him. I dare you. I dare you. You want some of that glory? Keep on praising him. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, and make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful word. 
What a wonderful word. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand praise for the word. Let's give our bishop a hand clap for the word. Well, that's it. Amen. Pentecost 2023 has now come to a close. Amen. I can't say I'm glad about it because I'm not glad about it. But I'm glad for what we experienced. And I'm glad for each and every you, each and every one of you who were able to share. Amen. In the excitement and in the power of God moving in this place, the fellowship that we have had, amen, this weekend, one with another, looking out and see the faces of the people, amen, different pastors have come, amen, and it's glad to see you all in the place also. People have traveled from near and far, and we thank the Lord for them, those who have traveled and I'm going to pray for those who will have to travel, that the Lord will continue to protect them. His blood covered their cars, their tires, engines, transmission. Take them back safely to their destination in the name of the Lord. Everyone is on your feet.